Dejahao, kumusta? My name is Victor and in today's video we are going to go through how I set up my FX30 and what are the settings that are most important to me. We're going to go through how I shoot with Cine EI mode and also flexible ISO mode and other settings that might matter to you. So let's get started. Okay, so now first we're going to go through main 2 and then we're going to change this to Cine EI mode and then color gamut would be your dot Cine mode because just has better colors in my opinion. Embed LUD file, we're not going to do that because we want to get the raw S-log clip rather than a final look with the colored LUTs on here. Okay, and then format, this is an easy thing. If you want to format your card before your shoot or before you start shooting, this is where you would go. And then just recording media or if you want to do simultaneous recording, you can do that as well. File settings, I just named it as FX30 underscore the file number. And then for the image stabilization, I just use active. I'm very used to how it performs. So we're just going to stick to that. Autofocus mode is your AFC, which is your continuous mode. You can go manual with the lens or you can change it through this setting. And then for focus area, I always like zone or center because those are the two. If I'm using a gimbal, I would always use center, especially if it's a wide intro shot. And then if there's a subject or there's a specific area I want to focus on, I'm going to use the zone. I don't usually use wide because it focuses on the closest subject or the closest object to your lens. And the others are just too finicky. I just like these two settings the most. And then on here, I just leave it at face eye priority in AF if there's a subject, if I'm shooting cars or something, and then people in the shot or secondary, I'm going to turn this off because it always locks into your eyes or the face of the subject rather than the thing that you want to focus on. And then here you have the option of human, animal, or bird if you do shoot wildlife. Now for the main one menu, what we're going to go for is the file format. I usually shoot XAVCHS because it gives you the smallest file while retaining the image quality. But the biggest requirement for this one is that you need an editing machine that has an H.265 or an HEVC media accelerator encoder and decoder so that your computer can handle these types of compressions while you're editing. If you don't have a machine like that, I suggest shooting on the SI because it's the most uncompressed, but it's also going to give you the best image quality and also a bigger file size because it's not compressing anything. If you are editing with proxies, you can edit fast on a slow computer, but your render times are still going to be slow. Next up is the frame rate. I just choose whatever frame rate that you're using, but if you're choosing a frame rate, always double check your bit rate, your record settings. Always put it on the highest bit rate because that's gonna give you the best image quality, the best files on your cameras. So in this case, we're just going to choose the top 100 megabits per second at 10 bit 422. So next up is the LUT. What we're going to go through is the 709 800% because this is going to give you like true to life colors. It's more accurate, it's more neutral. And the S709 is kind of like a more filmic look. It's going to have a little bit more style into it. Honestly, both works perfectly fine. It just depends on your preference, which one you want to look at for your S-Log footage. You can also load in LUTs here, your specific S-Log 3 conversion LUTs. And if you want to look at that or bake it into the camera settings so that you don't have to keep converting files. But so far, I just monitor it instead of embedding or burning the LUT into the image before I color grade because I love color grading. It's the most fun out of the editing process for video. Next up is the wind noise reduction. We're just going to turn that off so that we get the unprocessed audio from the camera. I know the in-camera microphone isn't as good as an actual microphone, but I think the wind noise reduction on the camera just sounds a little artificial sometimes. So I just turned it off. And then for the audio recording levels, it depends on your microphone really, but for in-camera, I just leave it at 20. It's just a good balance for everyday use. Now let's talk about the other settings that kind of matter to me. First is the exposure control type. I usually leave it on flexible exposure mode because of this thing. So instead of setting your camera to program or aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode or full manual, you have the flexible exposure mode. What this does is that 
if you want a certain exposure factor in auto, you can do so with just the buttons over here. So now if we hit the shutter button here, you can see that the TV icon has now a stop sign. That means I can't change that anymore and it's locked. That's a cool little feature. And if you want the shutter speed on automatic, you can just hold it and it's gonna have an A right beside the shutter. It's gonna give you an automatic exposure for the exposure compensation that you have set with your camera. Okay, and then we're just gonna turn that off and then put it back to one over 50th. And then same thing with the iris, you can hold it and then it's gonna go automatic just to keep it at the exposure compensation of zero. And then we're just gonna turn it off. And if you don't wanna accidentally change it while you're shooting, you can just lock both and you're good to go. Next up is the image stabilization. Again, I just set it on active and then on auto, especially for autofocus lenses. And if you have a manual lens, obviously you're gonna have to pick the specific focal length so that you get better image stabilization for that manual lens. Okay, let's talk about zoom. I just leave this as optical zoom only because sometimes I don't want to use the clear image zoom. While clear image zoom is really good, sometimes you can accidentally touch the rocker and it might mess up one of your shots. So I just leave it as this. But if I want a little bit of range with my lens, especially for prime lenses, I use clear image zoom and then it can just do this. And it's a really, really handy feature for Sony. Next up is shooting display. I just use rule thirds because I'm used to that. You can change this to whatever you like, but everything works pretty much. And then emphasize recording display on so that you get that red box on your display. Obviously you get the tally lights to let you know that you're recording, but this is also helpful if you have the tally lights turned off. Next up is marker display. This is just some things that might be useful to you. These are really cool, especially for safety zone. You want it at 80% and you're gonna go turn marker display on. And this is really helpful for text or lower thirds. And then you can turn that off. Another cool thing, if you wanna just crop your videos like anamorphic, you can go 2.35 by one. And it's gonna give you this so that you get that wide screen look. Again, these are just additional features that might be useful to you. All right, let's talk about exposure and the shooting modes. When I shoot on Cine EI, I just usually use base ISO of 800 and for low light, I do 2500. And then for both base ISOs, I just use the exposure index of 400 because it's gonna give me more light in and I can bring that down in post. And that's pretty much it. And then if you wanna shoot flexible ISO mode, which is kind of like your traditional mirrorless camera shooting mode, I choose the base ISO of 800. And then I'm exposing the image from zero all the way to plus one because it's very similar to shooting on Cine EI 400. And that's gonna give you a similar results with the Cine EI settings that we just talked about. Let's go through exposure compensation. This is grayed out right now because we don't have anything variable. We're gonna have the iris on auto and then it's gonna turn on. It has to have a variable on auto so that the camera knows to follow what the exposure value that you wanna do. Because if there's no auto, it's just gonna read the total exposure of your scene and it's up to you to decide where you wanna place it. And then for here, I just leave it at zero. Depending on what your shooting style is, this might be useful for you. But again, I don't usually shoot anything in auto unless I'm vlogging or if I'm doing a run and gun shoot. Metering mode, I just leave it at multi. And then white balance, I just leave everything but the shockless white balance to either three or two. If you have your white balance on auto, it's gonna set the speed of the transition. Let's just say you're coming in from a really warm indoor light to a daylight outdoors. The transition for the auto white balance will be slow or fast depending on your setting. So it's a really cool feature that it's not gonna give you an abrupt change depending on the scene that you're entering, especially for vlogging or documentary work. And then color tone, everything's just on S-Log3 
And then this is where you add your own LUTs into the camera. Next up is the zebra display. I just leave it on 70 for the skin tones. If it starts speaking, then I know that that's the maximum amount of value that I can have for the skin tone so that I get pleasing skin tones and that you can bring this down for darker skin colors. And then it's a good range to get really exposure on all the skin tones. It's up to you if you want the autofocus transition speed to be super fast or super slow in cinematic, or if you want to lock into the subject or be really responsive on where you're pointing the camera. Next up is the peaking display. I set this on yellow because you can see the yellow on most lighting situations. And we have a tiny screen, so mid or low works best on this camera LCD. Next up is just the physical settings of your cameras. On the monitor brightness, I just set it to sunny weather, so it's always gonna give you the brightest setting and the display quality on high. And then if you wanna flip the monitor, that's completely up to you. And then the power setting options. I know when you set up your camera for the first time, it's gonna ask you if you wanna put this on high. Just double check, put it on high so that it's not gonna turn off on the slightest heat settings on this camera and it's always helpful. And this camera has a fan, so I won't worry about overheating on this one. And last, but definitely not the least, turn off the audio signals. If you like it, sure, but to me, I think it just sounds like a toy. You have the tally lights anyways, so that you know that you're recording, but if you do want the audio signals as well, feel free to turn it on, but to me, I just turn it off. And that's it. That's everything that I do with this Sony FX30. And honestly, once you set it up and know a little bit more of the settings of this camera, it's so easy to shoot. It's a breeze. I love this body style. Everything is so convenient. And this is why I love the FX30 and the FX3. If you have any questions at all with the settings that we talked about, feel free to comment down below. And as usual, I'm giving away my Sunset Film LUT pack. And all you have to do to win is comment down below which do you use, Cine EI mode or flexible ISO mode? I'd love to know. If you wanna check out one of my FX30 videos, click on this video right here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. No one else.